Hey, well, it's just wonderful. We're combing through the scripture. Uh, I'm, I comb through my hair as well, but there's not that much to comb. But anyway, you know, remember it's context and other and meaning and, of course, background. Now, background, I find there's lots of good resources available to us which help us with the understanding of the background the culturally and geologically and geographically and all of those things that help bring greater meaning, greater sense of what scripture is saying. There's lots of wonderful tools that you can use. I mean, Bible histories, and even a, a good concordance for the meaning of words, uh, a lexicon, which also expands on that. But also there's things like... Uh, uh, the life and times of Jesus the Messiah. I mean, a wonderful work. The works of Josephus help us get some greater background on what was going on historically, etc., uh, at the time of Christ. And so learning those things can be very helpful. Kind of understanding the original intent uh, of the author also makes a big difference in terms of your understanding of Scripture. What is the really historical circumstances in which you find the author, the scripture, etc.? Like, you know, people can read Nehemiah and Ezra, and when you read it, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out, I mean, who came first? Was Ezra there first? Was Nehemiah first? How did all this happen? The rebuilding of the wall, the rebuilding of the temple. But as you do careful study and you get, you know, helps from background material, you can learn more clearly about kind of the order of how things happened. The same thing's true when you look at New Testament, especially the book of Acts. I mean, when these things happen, then you read epistles and letters that were written back to those churches. You kind of can tie some of those things together and it gives greater meaning to your study. You know, one of the prime examples of, of uh, people that understand the background is helpful is like in Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon, uh, I mean, some would say it's a complete allegory of uh, Christ's love for the church and we as the bride of Christ. Others interpret it more as a kind of a semi-hardcore sex manual. Anyway, it's, you know, but the, the background of the book was Solomon writing a love poem, if you will, about this beautiful bride and all that she meant to him and her response to him. And it's really quite exciting. Now, I will never allow a young couple to read it before marriage. <laughs> we don't want to incite them to things, especially to sin. But after that, oh, it's a wonderful thing for couples to read, I think, because it brings out at least the potential of how we can express our love one to another. But again, some would say, no, they would insist. No, it's allegorical. Well, Anyway, you can figure that one out yourself, but understanding some of the background. Who was Solomon? Uh, what was it, who was he writing to? Why would he be writing such a thing to this lady? Why would she be respond? You know, you can spend a lot of time on that, but spending the time on it, getting a better idea of the background of Scripture can bring richness and meaning to your study. So, hey, as we're studying the Word of God, our goal, of course, is to know what the Word says and be able to apply it to our lives. But first, before making application, you first have to really understand it. One of the biggest mistakes people make, exegesis, we call it, versus exegesis. To exegete is to bring out its meaning and understanding of a word or a phrase. As a Jesus is to read into Scripture what you want to see. Some of the crazy things that we hear sometimes on the internet and you know on YouTube are related to that as a Jesus. People saying what they say because they wish it was true. But those that are really solid in the word, know how to comb through the scripture and understand things well. They rarely get off track. They rarely get duped by some sensational word, whether it's related to eschatology or whatever it might be. No, they, they stay very solid. I'm not saying they're boring, but they're solid in their faith. They're not rocked. They're not shaken when things happen in the world. No, they're solid because their faith is firmly grounded on the word 
of God. And certainly that's our heart. That's the heart of Vision International University. It's the heart of, of our online learning systems is to provide for you information uh, and study material to help strengthen your walk in Christ. And so, look, I hope this brief little study has been a blessing to you. If you want more information about what we do, how we do it, go to vision.edu, visionlearningcenter.org, visiononlinelearning.org, drstandycoven.com. Hey, God bless. Until the next time.